it appears that the beginning of the end of the Mike Pence presidential campaign is starting to arrive. What is up, uh, people of the internet? It is me, Real American, back again with a new video today. It is time that we talk about the 2024 Republican presidential primary. Because everyone, it appears that former Vice President Mike Pence seems like his campaign's not in a good situation. As it appears that the campaign has built up $620,000 in debt, which is a major warning sign for uh, any presidential campaign. But it also demonstrates the complete and total pathetic downfall of the former Vice President, who many thought back in... 2020 and early 2021 could have been a potential future president, but well, the campaign obviously ain't going too well. Now, before we continue with today's video, I hope you enjoy these type of videos. If you do, smash the like button down below, subscribe, share with your friends, hit that little bell, follow the social media accounts in the description down below. And of course, join the channel today. Guys, just for a dollar a month, you can join Real American. This is the best way to support the daily content that we all know and love. So I hope and recommend you join the channel today. All right, everybody. And again, this is based on the recent FEC filing reports because, well, that's where the information comes from. But even before this, Many of us kind of expected this because, well, the Mike Pence campaign has been absolutely atrocious. I mean, there's really not been that many positives. Outside maybe the abortion question, Mike Pence is definitely not what we originally thought Mike Pence could have been as a future president, but we'll get to that in a second. Former Vice President Mike Pence's campaign faces a potentially existential cash squeeze with debt already piling up. The campaign told NBC News it will report having raised $3.3 million in the third quarter, with $1.2 million on cash on hand and $620,000 in debt, when his campaign finance filing is due to be made public Sunday. Pence himself chipped in $150,000 from his personal funds, the campaign said. So yeah, not only did he have some absolutely pathetic fundraising totals but his cash on hand is atrocious the debt is piling up i mean outside of the desantis campaign this is the financial numbers aren't that good in fact when you start reading between the lines there's a possibility pence may not even qualify for the next debate we're talking about former vice president of the united states not even four years ago he was the vice president of the United States. And he's struggling this badly? What am I supposed to say? Other than, this is a complete and total collapse of what was once seen as a potential future president. Pence's numbers reveal a campaign under serious strain, operating on a completely different financial terrain from that of his rivals. And they raise questions about his ability to continue to compete in the GOP primaries. Racking up debt, in particular, has long been a sign of a presidential campaign's in trouble, and potentially on the verge of ending. The last GOP presidential primary season offers an ominous parallel from the moment eight years ago. Then Wisconsin Governor Scott Walker's campaign reported just under a million dollars in the bank and 161000 in debt at the end of the third quarter. The equivalent moment in the, that election cycle. That's when he dropped out of the race. Yep, you heard that right. The exact quarter that Scott Walker dropped out. But you do comparisons. He had $160,000 of debt with a million dollars in the bank. Compare that with Pence. He has about a million dollars cash on hand, but $620,000 in debt. You have more debt and basically the same amount of money? You're talking about something even more atrocious than Scott Walker's campaign. 
The next campaign finance report, Walker's suspended campaign filed, made it clear how rapidly things could spiral. The report, covering the final three months of 2015, showed his campaign needed to deal with more than $1.2 million in debt. It took Walker a year to raise the money to retire the debt. And guess what? Remember, he had like a fourth of the debt Mike Pence is having right now. A fourth. Do some math. If let's say it's four times the amount, he could upwards have five million dollars in debt if this math holds up. Again, the DeSantis campaign maybe have larger amounts of debt, but think about this. The former vice president of the United States, who not too long ago was seen as a front runner for the future, before the January 6th stuff, you know, was kind of the final nail in the coffin when you really look at it. But the past year, his campaign stunk. Never Trumper. That's what he's essentially become. We need more. We need to stop focusing on the issues here and focus on Russia. What? This year, Pence's cash position compares unfavorably with those of rivals he once served with in Washington. Former U.N. Ambassador Nikki Haley has said it finished the third quarter with $9.1 million to spend. But Florida Governor DeSantis campaign announced it has banked $5 million. Senator Tim Scott has been spending heavily, but he also came into 2024 with a well-stocked federal campaign account built up over years in the Senate. Former President Trump, meanwhile, said it had nearly $336 million available to spend in the 2024 primaries. All those figures are based on campaign announcement and cannot be independently verified until the campaign file reports with the FEC, which are due by the end of Sunday. But it's going to be about that. So not so. let alone, you know, being anywhere close to the front runner, you're nowhere close to the people that are going to be in second, third, fourth. So, why are you still running? Your polling numbers are like 3% nationally, which i actually being kind of nice about. It's like, why are, you, why are you running still? It doesn't make absolutely any sense whatsoever. Meanwhile, Pence's campaign, or $1.2 in the bank, limits what the campaign can do. And at least 200000 of it is not actually usable during the primary season. So it's really a million dollars that he can spend, which is identical to what Scott Walker had back in 2016 or 2015. <laughs> it would be available only in the general election, according to an NBC analysis of the second quarter financial report. If it wasn't for DeSantis' collapse, more people would be talking about Pence's campaign for how atrocious this is. That's because it was raised from donors who had already given the maximum amount for the primary campaign. And this is the problem with the Mike Pence campaign, kind of DeSantis, going to be Nikki Haley. They have big donors. Yeah, they have one really good quarter. But then after like two weeks, they can't raise more money. That goes against federal law. So at this point in time, it's like, why are you still here? It's unclear how much of the third quarter money Pence raised is also unavailable for the primaries. The camp campaign declined to offer additional details. That means they know there's not enough here. That means they they are just screwed. At that point in time, I think they just kind of realize the writing's on the wall. The state of Pence's campaign finances coming out in the dash to make the third GOP primary debate on November 8th. The RNC criteria for candidates include racking up 70,000 donors to qualify for the stage. Pence faced a scramble to make the first debate, hitting the threshold for the contest a few weeks before it. Pence's campaign did not reveal the number of donors that accrued, and it has not commented on where it stands with regard to the third debate criteria. But the low dollar amount indicates Pence may face another serious climb to be able to participate. He has hit the polling threshold, barely, but he's lagging in 5th place in the 538 average national polls and further back in the Iowa polling average. And that, in my opinion, if Pence drops out, that's why. Not necessarily the financial part, that's one thing. But Iowa was going to be his main state. He was going to appeal to those evangelical types that supposedly were going to be against Trump, but that's stupid to say. But either way, Iowa was going to be Pence's best state. 
And all of his voters have either gone to Nikki Haley or Tim Scott. That's the problem with what Mike Pence was doing. He could have ran a very solid campaign about, you know, being the traditional conservative on social issues. But what really dragged him is foreign policy and his crappy economic policy. That's what really dragged him, in my opinion. And that's the thing that a lot of people, they realize, this guy sucks. Trump only picked him for the VP because he did appeal to a unique voter. But the problem is, even that voter, they're barely voting for him. Those Bible Belt types, it's like, why are you still here? But you just start looking at it and you realize, yeah. Why you, Pence, just drop out. You're going after Trump for being a pro-Putin. You're going after Ramaswamy DeSantis for uh, shilling for Russia. It's like, what? Do you not realize how you sound right now? How stupid that sounds? But who knows? Maybe the Pence campaign is understanding that, um, yeah, it's probably over. This campaign is a disaster. Pack it up and just... Uh, maybe I could run for governor again if he can, or maybe a Senate seat. I don't know. I really don't know the future for this guy, but he completely blew it. Anyways, folks, thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy this video, smash the like button down below. Subscribe. Share with your friends. Hit that little bell. Follow the social media accounts in the description down below. And, of course, join the channel today. Thank you so much, Godspeed to all of you.